So the final bits we have to prove about our refinement model M1 is about the deadlock freedom. We want to make sure the concrete model also does not deadlock. But let's uh, just try to recall very quickly about what we achieved so far, including in the initial model. So let's recall. Number one, we prove in the initial model that it is deadlock free, which is about the disjunction of all the guards is simply can be implied by certain hypotheses, right? That's something we proved. And also we proved in the case of the refinements that the concrete guard actually strengthened the abstract guard. Simply means whenever we have our concrete guard being, uh, concrete events being enabled, in that case, the corresponding abstract event should be enabled as well, right? That's what we spoke about earlier. And let's now talk about how do we argue overall the concrete system is really deadlock free. In that way, we're going to do something maybe a little bit of counterintuitive to you in the beginning. Let me point it out exactly. So this will be the proof obligation about relative deadlock freedom. So it's called relative because now we have to bring in both the abstract and the concrete models into the context rather than just considering just one of them. Let's take a look at this, right? This part over here, which I highlight in green, is the disjunction of all the guards in the abstract model. And this part over here for the go is the disjunction of all the guards for the concrete events in a concrete model, right? I want you to just pause, right? Uh, don't pause the video, but just pause together with me and think about whether or not this is intuitive to you. It may not be, I guess, because when you actually try to prove this particular uh, guard strengthening proof obligation, you have to put the concrete guard in the hypothesis. And also you want to put the abstract guard in the go, remember? But now we're doing the opposite. We're putting the disjunction of the abstract guard over here but we're putting the disjunction for the concrete guard in the go. We're doing the opposite, right? It's not arbitrary. There is a reason for that. So I think that the best way for you to really remember is to re really to remember the intuition. First of all, the way we uh, the way uh, that why we're doing the strengthening this way, you can definitely refer to the earlier part just to see the intuition. But for this part over here, let me try to convince you by using the, some diagram just to visualize exactly what this is asserting. So you would know the opposite way will be wrong, right? You can do that as an exercise your own. But let me try to uh, visualize this together with you, all right? I try to do that. I got two diagrams over here. I will talk about exactly how to interpret them, but I, I hope they will help your understanding about why we should put the abstract guard over here, but put the concrete guards over here, all right? The way to think about it is you can th uh, remember we talk about you can interpret each predicate as a set and the set would just be all the satisfying value, right? That's really the foundation we uh, review earlier. So given any predicate P, you can think about the set of all satisfying value for X such that P of X is actually true, right? So whenever you want to think about exactly what P is, you can think about the set of uh, all satisfying value for P, right? That's what we said before. Let's now do something similar. This is a predicate. This is another predicate. What exactly are we trying to prove? When we say this would be the hypothesis and this would be the goal. And we say over here, which is Intel, right? So this entire proof obligation for deadlock freedom or relative deadlock freedom, because we're considering both the abstract and concrete. This will be provable if we can visualize in this way, and this visualization is actually valid. If the following. Remember this uh, this uh, turnstile is simply means imply, meaning that we want to prove that this is actually stronger than this. Stronger means we have fewer satisfying values for this particular set. So this one ought to be stronger, right? Let me just put it here. So this ought to be stronger. On the other hand, this one over here ought to be weaker. And the way we visualize them is to say the disjunction of the abstract guards over here is this particular set. And the disjunction of the corresponding concrete guard is simply another set, which is a superset of that. It may be equal, but it may be larger. So that's why it says superset, but rather than proper superset, right? We talk about this kind of concept in week number one and week number two. 
So what does this really mean? This means, let me write it down. Okay, the way to interpret this diagram over here when the De La Freedom is actually provable is if an abstract states does not doesn't deadlock then the corresponding concrete states doesn't deadlock I would say DL all right so how do we see that these are all the state values where the abstract state does not deadlock and you can see these are all the states where the concrete states does not deadlock it's exact so that means it cover everything so whatever state I can choose for the abstract uh, abstract state not to be deadlock they are also members of the set where the concrete guards does not deadlock right so that's why it's exactly this informal description over here right you want to convince yourself this informal description over here is really corresponding corresponding to this diagram over here let me re reiterate just once more you want to make sure whatever states that's not going to cause the abstract state to deadlock those states must be valid state as well for the concrete state not to deadlock right and that's uh symmetrically we want to think about what does it really mean when this particular implication is not provable why would that be bad right that's another story i want to tell you okay the other side of the story well if the abstract state doesn't deadlock then the corresponding concrete state doesn't deadlock right so here we talk about the abstract over here uh, let me just try to first of all the abstract and the next one is the concrete right you want to always be clear about which state we are talking about concrete also doesn't deadlock that's one way to see it what about this one here this is the predicate over here and this one over here is the predicate over here apparently implication is not the case because in order for implication to hold this set must be a subset of this set over here the stronger set must be a subset of the weaker set but apparently this is not the case well it's a very general case of where it's not uh it's not the uh, subset why would that be wrong i'll simply take one state over here then you, you will see you can see this will be actually uh let's say here this state over here take a look at this state uh, let me use purple what does this state here really mean this state over here is really a state a state for which the abstract model doesn't deadlock right agree because this state here is simply just a member of the disjunction of all the abstract are so a member of that simply means from the abstract uh, abstract state point of view it simply does not deadlock however this state here is actually not part of the confinements of the uh, the disjunction of the concrete car what does that mean that means the corresponding concrete state would deadlock okay a state for which the abstract model doesn't deadlock is actually a deadlock states for the concrete model right let me write it down first of all and now highlight what's important and i'll visualize once more and then we can go ahead and do the uh, exercise okay a state for which the abstract uh, model doesn't deadlock on the other hand is actually a deadlock state for the concrete model right why again you can see that this state over here is really a member of so this one over here is a member of all the abstract art right i'll just say g over here the uh, the, the disjunction for all the abstract art let me just write it a little bit informally the disjunction of all the abstract art 
that's basically what's happening over here, right? This is like a disjunction, generalized, uh, general, generalized disjunction operator. And you can see this one over here is at this state over here is actually not a member of the disjunction of the concrete guard, which is H, right? So this particular state is really a counter example to show that there is at least one state for which the refinements is actually going to introduce a deadlock for which the corresponding abstract state does not really deadlock, right? I also got another uh, written down version on the slide, which you can definitely uh, reference as well. You want to see all the uh, from different uh, the explanation from different angles together, right? So this means the refinements introduce a deadlock scenario not existing in the abstract model in the abstract model. I'll just say AM for abstract model. All right over here, right? Right, so that's another way to actually conclude this particular uh, example here. The refinements simply introduce a deadlock scenario that does not exist in the abstract model. All right. All right, let's now go back to the slides. You can see that's exact, exactly the two uh, informal description I mentioned in the slides. I thought, you know, might just uh, make sense when I try to write them down uh, as we go with the explanation. Right, go over them and make sure you understand intuitively why we should really put abstract guard over here and a concrete guard over, the, uh, over here. And having these two diagrams aside, I believe that will really help, all right? Let's now go back to uh, the slide. I think the next part will be really to do some exercise about formulating the deadlock freedom uh, sequence. Let's do that quickly. It's not uh, tricky. It's very straightforward. Let's take a look, Okay. Right? So we got our abstract model over here. We got our concrete model over here. So this part here, AIJ, is Again, standard. I can draw that again in just one second. Done, right? That's the part, right? You can definitely see the correspondence for abstract uh, axiom, abstract invariant, concrete invariance exactly over here, right? So what we need to do now is to really say ab the disjunction of the abstract art. Where are the abstract art? We should go back to the abstract model over here. We got n less than d over here. And also we got n larger than zero. Right, you can also look up back to your slides or your notes. Right, so this part here is going to be n less than d, and then disjoint with n larger than zero. In this case, parenthesis is not really uh, uh necessary, but I'll just put it anyway, just for clarity. Right. So after this, we're gonna have the turnstile. Right. Think about what I put over here is exactly this part over here about the abstract art. All together and now we're going to do the concrete guards for all the concrete events including the old events and also the new events everything together how many do we have since we actually got four event uh four concrete events we got ml out also we got ml in and also we got il out oh and il in il in and also il out and we have no choice but put them together. But now here is very important to see how exactly to put them. For this one here, we cannot really put it individually, even though we got two guarding constraint. We have to put them together using conjunction, right? That's why each think about each new line in the guarding constraint is like a conjunction. Okay, so what we should do is we're gonna say number one is going to be a conjunction a plus b less than d and also c equals zero right so this is one and this one is going to be conjoined with i'm going to put a conjunction uh sorry disjunction over here right over here and the second one is going to be c larger than zero disjoin with a larger than zero disjoin with b larger than zero and a equals zero right so overall what we are really having is this, right? Let's now do a final remark. So this one over here, number one, is exactly number one over here. This part over here, number two, is exactly number two over here. And this part over here is number three, 
exact, exactly number three over here, and this part is number four, which is exactly number four over here, and we are trying to destroy all the guards together, right? So that's why one, two, and three, right? Exactly what we have over here, right? So that would be the formulation. The formulation itself is not too bad. You just have to know exactly to put where to put the abstract guard and where to put the concrete guard and I would like to just reiterate once more, it's so important for you to understand the intuition about provable case and also uh, unprovable cases and to see how to really describe such counterexample states about introducing a new deadlock scenario to the concrete state, which is unacceptable. All right. Alrighty. If you go back to the slides, you'll definitely see that's the uh, final answer. That's exactly what I just derived on the iPad. You can definitely also check it together uh, before you uh, start a proof. All right, let's now, before we actually move on to uh, the exercise of approving it, let's now introduce more inference rules.